Double Diver began five years ago when I posed a model in my New York City studio. The first challenge was how to pose a model in a handstand upside down. It's not just the pose that's important, but it's how to tell the story of integrity, trust, and teamwork when the final piece that I want to sculpt is actually two divers vertically connected at ankles and hands. The sculpture is so unique that new methodologies had to be invented to create it. It is the first of its kind, and not just a remarkable artwork, I am told, but a gravity-defying feat of engineering. I then mix silicone in equal parts and apply it to my model. When the silicone has set, I make a hard jacket over the silicone so that when I remove it from the model, it has a form to rest in. This form is then filled with plaster, which becomes the actual art. My work doesn't just mimic what the human body can do. I want to take the sculpture to another level. So the plaster positive I make from the live casting it has to speak, it has to connect, it has to have emotion. Because you can cast a person, but the final piece has to be more than just a casting. I start this process a second time, this time with a model posing with his arms up as if holding the ankles of the first model doing the handstand. Both plaster pieces of art need to be cut and pieced together so that they form an S shape. Once I'm satisfied with the piece, the sculpture is then scaled up digitally to 26 feet and printed in foam. The finished foam arrived in my studio in more than 26 pieces. None of the pieces had any detail. After I assembled them, I had to fill all the holes in the foam and sculpt all lifelike details back in. When this process was finished and the sculpture was now a detailed foam sculpture 26 feet high, I made a final rubber mold in several sections, which all fit together in a precision manner. This rubber mold was the one I sent to Bollinger Atelier to make the bronze patterns to be used for my unique process I call painting with fire or dripped bronze. I was then informed by the engineer I was using for this job that if I dripped the bronze into the sand cast molds I made for these patterns, the bronze may become greater than 4,800 pounds, which would not meet the requirements necessary for this sculpture. With the help of Tom Bollinger, we came up with a first time ever plan to drip the wax into thousands of organic shapes, which I would join together to become the 26 foot sculpture. I spent months at the atelier working on this wax. Once I finished all parts of the 26 foot double diver sculpture to my approval, another mold, this time called a ceramic shell mold, was made over the wax. The shell mold has channels. The molten bronze is poured into the shell and drips out of these channels, forming the bronze sculpture. The bronze sections get welded together and chased once again to perfection. Before they are welded together, a stainless steel armature is made. This armature is not ordinary steel, but rather steel that is so strong as to be able to hold the piece upright, even in an earthquake. Countless hours of design and engineering went into the Double Diver's armature. The next step for me was to paint the surface of the piece with special iridescent colors that change with the light and with the time of day. I used many shades of blues, purples, and pinks and interspersed them with 
thousands of overlapping ribbons of dripped, organic, polished bronze shapes. All parts were then moved on a flatbed truck to the site, Building 9 of NetApp's headquarters in Sunnyvale, California. I stood there with my team, John Ritchie and David Brown, with camera in hand, and my gallerist, Brigitte, as well as NetApp's team, Elizabeth and Paul, waiting for the truck to arrive at 7 a.m. on April 10th. The crane came first, and then the truck pulled up. The sculpture was all wrapped in shiny protective wrap. When everything was in place, little by little, the sculpture was erected and placed in position and then unwrapped. The Double Diver is the largest and most important artwork I have created in my career. It has helped me push the boundaries of my talent. 4,800 pounds rest gracefully on an S-shaped curve and six inch wrists. One figure on the ground, while a second figure grasps the ankles of the first figure. The piece soars into the sky, representing the struggle to do the impossible with perseverance, trust, and grace. A remarkable pedestal needed to be constructed to hold this sculpture effortlessly and elegantly upon it. I created one with two tiers in matte stainless steel. I loved working with NetApp and Elizabeth Arslaner, Tom Bollinger of Bollinger Atelier, and Brigitte of Sculpture Site Gallery to create my first public sculpture for Silicon Valley. The sun came out and it lit the stunning surface, not only brightening the piece, but our day as well, and we all applauded. Today, May 30th, marks the day we all have been waiting for, the official unveiling when NetApp gifts the city of Sunnyvale the double diver. school friends who traveled here, who mean everything to me. I want to welcome, sitting right here, my niece Amanda Ackerman, who I love and adore. I want to welcome my studio, John Ritchie, David, who did my video, and I hope you all see it, and the website, and Roddy, right over here, who helped build the Double Diver and my foundry, this Kim right over here from Tom Bollinger Atelier, who helped me do the impossible. And many of my friends are here today. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece. It also took five to seven years for me to do it. And it is the impossible. NetApp and Elizabeth, who believed in me, they made me push the boundaries of what I could do because you're seeing uh, four tons of steel on six inch wrists. And everybody said you could never do that. Special steel had to be designed by brilliant architects. An incredible pedestal had to be made to hold it foundation going into the ground. You would not believe what 
the work, the thought that went into this piece. A beautiful model, Richard Nuzalese, who wanted to be here today. Handsome, wonderful model. Helped pose for the piece. A terrific gallerist, Bridget McMire from Sculpture Site Gallery, who will be here a little later, who also believed in me. Many people helped to make this possible. My high school friend, Carol Handelman, reminded me yesterday of something I said many, many years ago in my graduation arista when I was 17 years old and graduated high school. She said yesterday in an email to me, I'm looking forward to seeing the double diver in the flesh and congratulating you, Carol. I looked at the arista and found the quote you said when you graduated high school with me. You said, all passes, art alone endures. Thank you, NetApp, for believing in me and allowing me to make and helping me to create art that will endure. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and helping us further enrich the community in which we live and please enjoy and invite your friends to visit our campus and to visit the Double Diver. It's here for your enjoyment. Thank you so much.